Good morning, everyone. Amanda here. Okay, I don't believe I have addressed this topic before, and I know other people have. I think I haven't touched upon this only because I guess I didn't really know how to say it, or um, I guess I just didn't want to be judged in a negative way because you know a lot of things with mental illness people you know the negativity that can come from people um, with a lot of invalidation name calling threatening all that kind of stuff that has happened to a lot of vloggers um, I guess I just didn't want that but <laughs> I always have the option of disabling the comments and that's cool with me. Alright, so on to the topic. The topic for this video is hypersexuality. And I don't know what the perception is of the general public when they hear about hypersexuality in bipolar disorder um, in a manic phase could be hypomanic as well, but in the hypomanic manic phase before it gets to a point where it's way out of control and you need hospitalization. Um, and not everyone has this particular symptom. I happen to have this particular symptom, but not everybody who has bipolar experiences this particular symptom. So... Okay, before I knew that I had bipolar, um, we'll go back to high school years, my teenage years. Excuse me. Um, I was, when I was with my boyfriend or whatever whoever I was with at the time. I really didn't date many people. But this one guy that I dated, I I really, really liked him. I mean, really liked him. He's like the last guy that I actually had really deep feelings for. And I, I met him when I was 16. So, back then, when I was in a hypomanic phase or manic and I didn't even know it back then I would become very excited by him and and I don't know if it was just him or if it was I think it was partly him partly me and the disorder at all at the same time so I would want to be with him in that way all the time like all the time only because I had it was like this um, this feeling this this power came over me and spewed forth all this sexual energy that I couldn't keep inside and even if it was just making out I wanted to do something sexual with him all the time and sometimes <laughs> he would say, oh, we've done it like a couple times today. Let's take a break. And I'm like, ah, let's do it again. You know, kind of a thing. I was overly, overly excited more than I should have been. And so that's like an example. Um, but it, you know, obviously you want to be with your partner. But think of wanting to be with your partner in a sexual way, but 10 times, that feeling is like 10 to 100 times more powerful than what you normally experience. And that is what it is like for me to feel that. Another example is if I am in that frame of mind, I do get very flirty. And I will 
walk up to a strange guy and flirt with him. You know, don't know him. Just be like, walk up, be like, hi, how are you? Good? All right. Well, you're hot. <laughs> kind of a thing. And I don't, it's like there's no filter when it comes to that, those feelings, those urges that are just so powerful and overwhelmingly powerful. It's almost like, it is dri it's my driving force and I don't have control over the brakes or the steering or anything and it almost has to play it no it has to play itself out and then after that like I will flirt with people um, and be very like ah, you know <laughs> that kind of thing but when I come down when I'm not in that mindset anymore I'm like, wow, I am really like, okay, let's, oh, we had it like once a day, that's cool, you know, or twice a week, that's cool, you know, so it goes from like this extreme to this extreme, so on my normal level right here, my baseline, I don't mind being intimate, but I'm not so like hyped up on that feeling that I have to have it all the time. Like, I want it all the time. Touching, kissing, whatever. So, I know that it is from the disorder based on how I am, like, right now. I feel fine. I believe I'm at my baseline. I don't think I'm going up too high or down too low. I think it's just, it's just normal, you know, like most people. It's just normal ups and downs for right now. So, I know in this frame of mind, I... I'm not interested in just having that kind of relationship, a sexual relationship, or being overly flirty with anybody. So I know that how I feel now is how I normally feel, and during those other times, that particular symptom can get a little bit out of control, and I'm very flirty. Um, if I have a boyfriend, I am very, very highly sexual. And I have the urges like all the time. And it suddenly hits me. Like all of a sudden I'm like, I need to do this. It's like, oh my God. And I can't get rid of the feeling until um, I do something about it. And that's what it's like for me. I am not speaking for anyone else. But I will tell you that not everyone with bipolar disorder has this symptom. We're all different. We're all unique. It affects us all differently. But I just wanted to talk about this because I know that it's a very controversial, um, almost a taboo topic. And I don't see why it should be taboo. It's a part of the disorder. I don't want to feel ashamed about it. I don't want to feel bad about it. I just want to know that it occurs and that I am aware of it, and that hopefully in the future, if I start feeling that, I can do something different. Like, instead of going out in public, right, stay home. You know, do something solitary, or do something with my, my son, or something like that. But I don't want people to take away from this, like, oh my god, that's so negative, and oh my god, how could you act like that, that kind of thing. It's part of the disorder. And it's something that I wish I could just grab it and pull it back in and say, no, stop. Um, but I can't. It just happens. So I hope that people who are watching this, if you have this symptom that now you know you're not alone, there are other people and um, there is support here from me. And also people who might not understand or have whatever opinion or belief about it. Um, I just want you to know that it's not something that we do on purpose. It's just something that comes over, at least it comes over me, and I feel like I have no control. Like something else is, has taken over my behavior and it's like I can't stop. But it doesn't make me a slut. I'm not sleeping with these people. It's just flirting like, ah, I think you're cute, uh, kind of a thing. But if I have a boyfriend, then yes. <laughs> it can be that way if I'm having 
if I am in an episode. So please don't think of this as taboo. Please don't think of this as, oh my God, don't talk about that. Oh my God, it's bad. You know, like the negative connotations of bipolar disorder in general um, or any mental illness. Excuse me, my nose is a bit stuffy. The weather keeps getting a little warmer and then cold again. And then it's like going up and down, I guess, because we're getting closer to spring. So I don't know if this is allergies or if it's just the, the, the temperature, it's like changing, so it's messing with my sinuses. <laughs> but anyway, um, I just want to talk about what it is like for me, my experience. I gave the two examples and, you know, just to let people know it's not a bad thing. It doesn't make me any less of a human being. It doesn't make me bad or anything or other people. It's just a part of the disorder. So hopefully you can understand that or at least empathize, you know, um, and, you know, not put people down because of it. But anyway, that's my experience. That's what it's like for me. Um, and like I said, I hope you guys get something out of this. Positive. Something positive. And if this is something that you don't want to hear or talk about, then please don't watch this video or other people's videos. Um, because if you don't like it, then don't watch it. You know, it's not like you can't look at another video. But anyway, that's what it's like for me. I hope you got something out of this, um, even if it's just knowing that you're not alone. That works for me. Um, so take care, everybody. I love you all, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.